percent of income in Canada. The second quintile, so that's 20 percent, that have the second lowest income, they have about 10.6 percent of income here in Canada. In order to create a Lorenz curve, we need to look at not what each 20 percent has, but we need to look at it cumulatively. So what we're looking at is as we go from a population 0 percent to 20 percent to 40 percent to 60 percent to 80 percent to 100 percent of the population, how much income do they have? So when it comes to the lowest poorest 20 percent of the population, they of course have 4.8 percent of the wealth. And to make our graphing easier, we've essentially just ignored the percentage. But you can leave the percentage in there as well. So the population would be in percentage and so would uh, the income or wealth. So now we're looking at what 20 percent, oops, sorry, 0 percent of the population has 0 percent of the wealth. 20 percent of the population has 4.8 percent of the wealth. Now we want to look at what 40 percent of the population has. Well, we know the 20 percent that's the poorest has 4.8 percent of the wealth. The second 20 percent has 10.6 percent of the wealth. So in order to figure out what 40 percent of the population has, we have to add together 4.8 percent and 10.6 percent. And so we find 40 percent of the population in Canada has 15.4 percent of the wealth. To find 60% of the population, we would take the lowest quintile, that's the first 20%. Then we add the second quintile, that's the next 20%. And then we add the third quintile, the next 20%. So 60% of the population has 31.7% of the income in Canada. To find 80% of the population, we need to add the first 20 plus the second 20 plus the third 20 plus the fourth 20. So 80% of the population has 55.8% er, of the income in Canada. And so we know we've done our calculations correctly if when we find the 100% of the population well, 100 percent of the population should have 100 percent of the wealth. And we can show this by adding the lowest quintile plus the second plus the third plus the fourth plus the fifth. And you'll see here that when you add up the 20 percent at the five different levels of income, so 100 percent of our population, they have 100.1 percent of income and that's because of rounding error. So we would write then that 100% of the population has 100% of the income. And we want to compare that to the two extremes, equality and inequality. Well if there is equality then everybody has an equal share. So 0% of the population has 0% of the wealth, 20% of the population has 20% of the wealth, 40% has 40, 60% has 60, 80% has 80, and 100% of the population has 100% of the income. The idea is if we had 100 people, then each one would have 1% of the income, in which case 20% of the population, so 20 people, would have 20% of the income. So that's one extreme. Perfect equality, everyone has the same amount. The other extreme is perfect inequality which means that the 20 percent poorest people in the population have none of the money. 40 percent of the population, zero income. 60 percent of the population, zero income. 80 percent of the population, zero income. Now to be truly accurate, 99 percent of the population would still have zero percent income and it's not till that very last person would we see all of the wealth. To get our graph to show that we need to actually graph all zeros for inequality. So now that we have our population, we have perfect equality, we have perfect inequality, and now we have a country that we want to create a Lorenz curve for, the next step in the process is to highlight the information and insert a scatter plot. 
Now when it comes to scatter plots, you can choose to have just dots, but we're going to add some lines to make it easier to see. So we're going to do scatter with smooth lines. So now we want to clean up our graph a little bit. So the first thing we want to do is change the chart title. So if we click on where it says chart title, we can change it to say Lorenz curve for Canada. The other thing we want to do is change these axes to be between 0 and 100. So if you click on the vertical axes, for example, you can right click and select format axes, or you can see our panel here on the right, and we go to uh, where it says axes options on the far right, and we change the maximum from 120 to 100. Now let's do the same thing for the horizontal axes. So let's go and change our axes options and let's do maximum and we'll do a hundred and we can click here. Now notice that we do not have the same increments. The vertical is in tens and the horizontal is in twenties. So we can click back on that vertical axis and we can change where it says axes options we can change it to major units of 20. And now we'll see that it matches. The reason we do this is so that we can see perfect equality represented here in this blue line. And notice that it's a 45 degree line if we make both axes uh, between zero and 100. And so we can see very nicely perfect equality as this 45 degree line. We can see perfect inequality as this horizontal line. And we can see where our country Canada lies in between. So as we look at the Lorenz curve for a country like Canada, the closer it is to the 45 degree line, the closer we are to equality. The closer the line for Canada is to the horizontal line, the closer we are to inequality. And to really see the difference, we could add another column of information. We could add another country, such as the U.S., graph the Lorenz curve for the U.S. and see which side of the Lorenz curve for Canada it's on. Is it closer to perfect equality than Canada is, or is it closer to perfect inequality?